New research indicates that Uber and Lyft drivers may exhibit some racial bias when picking up passengers. So this study comes from Massa Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Stanford University, and the University of Washington. And let me break down a little bit about how they carried this out. So four black and four white research assistants hailed, Bloomberg reported, and each of them indicate included a photo of themselves in the app. The second study was conducted in Boston by individuals whose appearance allowed them to plausibly travel as a passenger of either race, but using African-American sounding or white sounding names. The total rides hailed in the study were almost 15 Hundred And here were the results of that. So Uber drivers in Boston canceled rides for black men with black sounding names twice as often compared to other men. In Seattle, black people waited noticeably longer for Uber and Lyft rides than white people, up to 35% longer, according to the press release that accompanied this study. Uh, so the study also found that women experienced significantly longer travel times than men, and I, I look forward to talking about why that might be with both of you. Um, and uh, <laughs> what I like about this research study is that it goes a little bit further. It suggests a couple things that we might be able to implement that might help uh, limit racial bias in the future. They say to curb discrimination on the ride sharing apps, the researchers suggest that the app provide less information about riders to drivers, eliminating a passenger's name and photo to prevent drivers from discriminating against them implicitly or not before they accept or deny the ride. Now, the author of the study is named uh, Christopher Niddle, and he is a professor at MIT. He ends this by saying, quote, the patterns of discrimination were quite clear and consistent in both cities, and one can only assume it's happening all across the country in other markets. So my question for you, Hassan, is do you think that it is actually reasonable to assume that this sort of discrimination is happening all across the country, or was this just limited to the three cities that they conducted the research in? No, absolutely. I mean, I have plenty of anecdotal evidence, and I actually wanted to talk about this really funny. When we were in New Orleans yesterday, uh, Anna and I were waiting outside to go to this awesome um, soul food restaurant, and I called an Uber, the person, uh, uh, knowing that my name was Hassan, called me back and was like, oh, where are you going, whatever, and then I explained it to him because apparently Uber doesn't let you t uh, tell the driver until you get in the ride where you're going. And he hung up on me and he canceled the ride. And then this happened over and over again, so I was like, okay, what's going on? And then Anna called, same guy, same guy, accepted and was like, hey, baby, where are you going? Like, he oh. honestly, he was... He was super creepy, and then Anna, of course, started screaming at him. She's like, oh, it's really interesting that you call me and <laughs> wow. you want to pick me up, yet you canceled on my friend who I'm waiting here with, and the guy hung up the phone, and, and this goes back not to racial discrimination, but to the second part they were talking about, Sexism. about how women, yeah, about how women experience longer rides, because I have talked to a lot of Uber drivers. Again, anecdotal evidence, I'm not an MIT professor, but they really? will usually tell me like, oh, you know, I, I just started to pick up chicks, you know what I mean? Or like, there is this common mythology amongst Uber and Lyft drivers of like, picking up the drunk girl and bringing her home and yes. then having sex with her. Plenty of times Uber drivers have told me stories about it. Now, I'm, I'm not gonna go ahead and say that's all sexual assault or rape. I, plenty of instances where that's consensual and that's great and it's almost offering an extra service because these aren't people that are full-time, uh, this isn't their full-time jobs. They're people like you and I where this is the kind of what they're doing for extra side cash. So it's I interesting. Um, I have another point, but I feel like I've gone on for too long. No, here, so let, me, you let guys... me interrupt a little bit to okay, just Okay, interrupt redirect. me for a second, and I'm going to come back to my other Great, point. Great, looking forward to it. <laughs> so, uh, another thing that I wanted to point out, because, Hassan, you, you do make a good point, was the study talks about how some women would be going through the same intersection multiple times yeah. with their driver just to continue the conversation, and then they use this as an example for ride services like Chariot for Women, which is uh, a similar sort of ride share service, but it's run by women, and they can only pick up women, which I think is really effective. Um, but I wanted to get your take, take, Jenk, on do you think that what they are saying about eliminating names, photos, all that stuff will help people be less discriminatory, even implicitly, when they pick up people or passengers? Yeah, you know, it's funny. When I first started using Uber and I saw people's names, race, etc., I thought, hmm, I wonder if this will affect people, mm -hmm. right? And then I immediately thought, of course it will. <laughs> so now we have the MIT research, etc., to, to, to back that up. But the reason I thought that is because of all the other studies about how African American names or even hands on eBay lead to lower price for the product if a black hand is holding a product as opposed to a white hand. And they'll want more assurances that it's going to be delivered. 
uh, the African American sounding names on resumes get called back 50% of the time less. So I knew, okay, I can see them, I can see their race, everybody can, they're, uh, and, and they can see mine. This is going to be an issue, not for me. Nobody knows what my race is, so it's never been yeah, an issue right, for me. Yeah, right, except you're, no one can pronounce your name either, so it's definitely still a problem. But look, if you, in, in all fairness, this has been going on for ever. Like, it's not, this isn't like, oh my God, Uber and Lyft, just, uh, they're, those people are racist. No, like, taxi cab drivers are racist as well. It's like common, it, it's within, like, movies. It's like a popular culture reference that black men or black women can't get hail cabs as easily in New York, uh, yeah. of a very progressive, uh, very diverse city as a white man or a white woman can. Yeah. And, and so that's also been borne out in studies. And so, of course, it's not an Uber or Lyft issue. It's, a, it's all of us that have the issue. We have the racial bias uh, embedded in our heads. And by the way, uh, other studies have shown that African Americans also discriminate against other African Americans. Because the racial bias is implanted, unfortunately, uh, through propaganda, et cetera, in all of our heads. And that's why we talk about it. So now, some will, of course, want us to not talk about it. Like, like as if we created the problem by reporting on the study. Or that the professors at MIT and Stanford created the problem by doing the study. They must no, all be libtards and social justice warriors there. That's right. why this study. No, changes. what they are is scientists. So they record a phenomenon that's already occurring. Mm -hmm. And they, so if it makes you uncomfortable to know the facts, well, that's your problem. Okay. But what we're trying to do is highlight it here so that people can go, oh, okay, we didn't know that was happening. Well, then if we realize that this is clearly an issue, as the numbers indicate, both for minorities and for women, maybe we should look for an answer. Like maybe the answer is taking out the names and races. I, you know, that's a fine suggestion. I'm sure there are many suggestions. There is no answer for the pervy activation. guys, well, right? Pervy guys are going to drive around longer with women. They are. Yeah. And I'm so layer to it too, because this happened. It's what part of town you're in. Um, Ubers have canceled on me because it took me two and a half minutes to get outside. And when I was doing part of town, they waited a lot longer because, well, why would I leave right away? I have a, 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 a ride to pick yeah. up, right? But um, yeah, it's, it's all happening everywhere. But the last comparison, as far as you're talking about society, um, there's complaints about in certain parts of town, certain citizens, we're still talking about racial and maybe uh, uh, gender lines, uh, ambulances take a long time to get places, police officers responding, and then police in general. I've always said this, when people get mad, they say, how dare you disparage our police officers? All police officers are citizens of our country, or our world, and they have the same general biases and opinions and, and uh, assumptions about people as soon as they see a name or see a face. And like you mentioned, Jake, black folks too, because we're all in the same system. So if you think we're separate, we're not. It all happens. We're all with that same kind of slant and negativity. We need independent media to make sure that we hold corporate media accountable. The people that can make that happen is you. You make the Young Turks possible. TYTnetwork.com slash join. Join us. Be the revolution.